many of our patients ask, well, how does uh, lifestyle affect fertility? And the, the answer is, I, I think we've gotten a lot better idea over about the last 10 years of, of how some things affect fertility. Um, some things are still a little bit uh, unclear, but we know that, for example, smoking is very, very bad for fertility. We know that women who smoke, uh, for the most part, decrease their chances of pregnancy per month by about 50%. They also increase the risk of tubal pregnancy significantly and of miscarriage significantly. And uh, of course, if they continue to smoke through pregnancy, then they increase the risk of cerebral palsy in babies and preterm birth and all kinds of other bad things. So smoking is clearly a bad lifestyle choice. Another uh, factor that may interfere with conception is alcohol usage. And we don't really have a, a very clear idea about how much alcohol use will decrease fertility to what point. but. Overall, it looks like it's probably detrimental. Um, excess alcohol consumption can cause all kinds of problems with babies, serious problems in babies in pregnancy, and we've known that for a long time. But it looks as though alcohol usage at all will delay the uh, chance of uh, conception. So that women who are drinking alcohol um, tend to conceive later than those who do not. So a um, ge good general recommendation is for patients not to, not to drink alcohol. As far as caffeine usage, um, we think it's probably better for patients not to use caffeine. As a general rule, uh, the caffeine is a very powerful um, phosphodiesterase inhibitor. It, it keeps enzyme systems within cells working longer than they should, which is why it tends to keep you awake. Um, but it, overall, it may throw off uh, some of the um, metabolism of early embryos, and it may not be a good thing for them. Um, so lower caffeine or no caffeine is probably far better than, than drinking a lot of coffee or tea during the day. Um, stress, we think, is a, is a big factor as well, but, but it's hard to quantify. And most of our patients, when they um, have been trying to get pregnant and they haven't been able to, by the time they get to us, are fairly stressed um, So as a general rule. So it, it's hard to know how much uh, an effect that makes, but we know that women who are going through fertility therapy have very similar stress levels to women who are going through cancer chemotherapy. And so that probably translates to a less favorable time for conception because as a general rule, humans haven't been able to have really good fertility when stress levels are very, very high, um, probably because you didn't want to have the burden of a pregnancy or the nutritional demands of pregnancy uh, during um, times of stress or famine. So controlling stress, we think, is very important. And I think that that's where um, daily exercise of half an hour to an hour of moderate activity a day is a good thing um, for almost all of our patients. Um, we would very much like them to have normal body mass as well, because we know that if you have too much, um, if too much body mass or if you're too thin, then your fertility falls off. And for the patients who are too thin, again, we think it's more of a stress effect. Um, and the body is interpreting that as sort of a nutritional deficiency. For patients who are too heavy, we think that uh, the, the, the necessary higher insulin levels to control blood sugar are probably detrimental for early embryonic development. Um, another um, thing that we think is, is helpful beyond exercise for stress is uh, participation in programs where you can kind of learn to modify your own stress and uh, improve that over time. Um, and then also acupuncture may be very, very helpful. So um, as a general rule now, we are recommending that when any time patients are going through more stressful therapy, such as in vitro, that they consider going through both, uh, say, a mind-body program and an acupuncture program to, uh, to help mitigate some of that.